and speaking on it, I know we mentioned it a lot this podcast so far, but what is a four corner arthrodesis um, and, and, and what patients do we use this for? So the four corner is a excision of the scaphoid and then you fuse the captate, the hamate, the lunate and the triquetrum with some form of fixation. And I normally use distal radius bone graft also since we're already there, just as some nice um, osteoinductive type uh, bone graft. And we use this more so on the patient that has that bad capitate arthritis, has bad capital lunate arthritis. Because if we did a PRC, they would just have arthritic, arthritic bone sitting in the lunate fossa defeating our purpose. So a patient that's uh, healthy otherwise capitate arthritis, the four corner does well. The studies do show that there's maybe a little bit more uh, grip strength that's maintained with the four corner because the height is maintained. And so some people, laborers, uh, young males, I recently had a physician who was very active who, uh, while older, I recommended a PRC, but he was pretty adamant about the four corner just because he did a lot of active things and the grip strength was really important to him. Okay. So those patients get the four corner, but like I was alluding to, and I, I think you went by a picture with the with the plate, but your concern is, is that you can get a non-union of the four corner and uh, non-union of a four corner becomes very difficult and often can lead somewhat towards a, a pan-carpal fusion later down the road. Okay. And, um, okay. And so those are going to be the patients and that uh, kind of general overview of four corner orthodesis. But just, just out of curiosity, what is your surgical approach to this? Are you, are you going dorsal? Or are you going dorsal and volar? Like, how do you generally, you know, in the operating room, how do you, how do you deal with these? Yeah, so I actually tell the patients uh, beforehand that unless they have a strong preference, it's going to be a intraoperative decision. The reason being is that I think a cap or a uh, capsular interposition or a PRC does well. There's less complication rate, faster recovery, and quite frankly, technically, it's easier, right? You're just removing the bones without needing to worry about anything fusing. So if the cartilage on the capitate looks good and there's not a contraindication, I tend to lead towards the PRC. Now, if the, the capitate looks horrible and the arthritis looks horrible, then I'll lead to the four corner. And all this is done by a dorsal approach, uh, looking at the capitate and looking at the lunate articulation to see what kind of arthritis there is or is not. Okay. And I know we were just um, talking about plates and just some of them, when I was reading on the, on the different techniques you use for these four corner arthrodesis, there was, you know, there was one topic brought up about circular plate fixation. I know some of the pictures before that they use K wires to hold, uh, to hold the bones together, hoping they would fuse. Can you kind of talk about the, uh, the, the, the fixation method and I guess downsides or upsides to them? Sure. So I, it's kind of interesting because I actually take a little bit of a different approach. So the circular plate fixation has a higher rate of non-union. That literature is, I think, 10 to 15 years old minimally. I actually do use a newer version of the circular plate. The newer version actually has a setup where there's a cortical screw that goes into each of the four corners. And the cortical screw sucks the four corners in together, actually providing compression. And then I put locking screws on top of that to just secure that fixation in that place. So that's the way I personally tend to do it. Okay. And really, you, you can, when we're talking about four ahead. corners, you're talking about each corner just being being one of the different bones, like decapitate, hamate, lunate, and triquitrum. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead. Yeah. So one, so a cortical screw in each one of those to compress and bring them together after I put some bone graft in. Now there's people that use uh, headless compression screws, which also work well. You can also use K wires, although I would worry about K wires because you can't really get that compression that you can from either the plate or the headless compression screws. Okay. And another thing that I've noted or I've seen talked about is the position of the lunate when you when you fuse these. I've, I've seen some say that they, you can fuse them flex, you can fuse them neutral, you can, you can fuse them in an extended position. Why, why, number one, why is that important? And then, you know, are there any ups or downs to each of them? 
Yeah. So, you know, back to that DZ deformity, right? So the, the lunate's trying to sit in an extended position, which means that the, the capitate will hit the dorsal rim or the radius where you'll lose that motion, which is primarily an extension, which makes sense if you've lost most of your mid-carpal extension just from the deformity, then you're going to lose it after you fuse it. If you put it, but the benefit of that is you get more flexion by putting it in an extended position. Whereas the contrary is if you put it in a flex position, you can actually get a little bit more extension. Yeah. My yeah. opinion is, is we don't do a lot of things in significant wrist flexion. Most of our power grip, if you think about going out to shake someone's hand, your wrist is actually in extension. It's not neutral. It's not flexion because that's the biomechanical strength of the flexor tendons as well as uh, the thanars, hypothanars, et cetera, is being in that extended position gives you more strength. So in my mind, I want them to make sure they can get into a power grip. So I tend to put them in neutral or even a hair of a couple degrees of flexion. I err on the side of that. Ah, uh, okay. No, that's that makes a lot of sense. You know, thinking about uh, the functionality of the hand and and what you need to use things for as far as um, uh, your daily different daily activities. You know, that definitely makes more sense. Even when you're opening a door, you're not really flexing your wrist too. Much. At least I don't flex my wrist too mm-hmm. much when I'm opening a door. Uh, there may be some out there that do. I don't, I don't know. But you know, other things, um, technical aspects of this four corner arthrodesis is one I was looking at, I was talking about fusing the um, cap- capital lunate joint with or without triquetrum excision. What is, uh, I guess, what would uh, make you want to excise the triquetrum versus leave it? Like, what are, you know, why is this, I guess, like, why is this a thing, you know? Yeah, so the thought is, is that if the, you know, the triquetrum wants to extend an ulnar deviation and you fuse it in a neutral position, then it could block your ability to get that uh, ulnar deviation. I tend to just fuse all four. I want more ma- uh, mass of the fusion site. And uh, you can fuse it in the column manner. And what I mean by that is you can fuse the capital lunate and fuse that hemi and the triquetrum and not fuse between the capitate and the hemi. And that's because the capitate and the hemi have very limited motion between the two. They're relatively fe- fixed. So in theory, if you fuse just those columns, it should have enough stability for your fusion and to have successful four corner, although you're not really creating a four corner. Ah, okay. Yeah, no, that, that, that makes sense. And so again, and I know we mentioned a couple of times when we look at, you know, proximal row carpectomy versus, um, versus a four corner arthrodesis, we mentioned before that proximal carpectomy, you don't have much of a, uh, there's a less complication rate. And, you know, I guess the, the the uh, procedure is technically a little bit easier. You know, there's no need to fuse the bones in case you have a host that you know it may be a very uh, high A1C, so they're diabetic and they're they're a smoker. Um, is there anything else between going between four corner arthrodesis versus PRC, the surgical uh, techniques that we should know? Yeah, so kind of like anything else, and especially similar foot and ankle is if you're doing the four corner. I spend more time on the debridement of the joint surfaces than anything else. And that's just because if you have any sort of cartilage and you don't get that good bleeding uh, subchondral trabecular bone, then it won't fuse. So so that's number one. For the PRCs, you know, you're relying on the radioscapho capitate, which is one of the volar ligaments coming off of the styloid that goes along the waist of the scaphoid into the capitate. Well, when we remove that scaphoid, the only thing keeping the capitate from drifting ulnarly or sitting over the distal ulna is that radioscapho capitate ligament. So it's really important not to get too aggressive with your scaphoid excision and injure that ligament. 